Hello guys and girls and welcome back to another episode on the Falcon YouTube channel. Hope you're all doing fantastic and you've been enjoying the content. So guys and girls, what are we going to be talking about in this episode? Well, essentially, I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about, you know, a bit of psychology and probabilities as probabilities play such a big part of the psychological game. I'm currently just revamping some content for Falcon into psychology, so I thought I'd share just a few snippets of it. You know, psychology goes far more in depth, but I thought this would be a great opportunity to just share a few insights that I think is gonna help you out. <laughs> coin theory, so just got a coin here. You know, there's an experiment that I'm conducting as well. This coin isn't actually weighted, but I'll give you a bit of an example. So, 100 flips. Essentially, the first thing I want you to understand is this. Just take this coin, for example. If we were to, let's say, flip this 100 times, right? And we were to say every single time that we flip this, let's say your heads aren't tails. Every single time that it's heads and that you win, essentially, if you like, if you want to call it that, I have to give you 10 pounds. And if it's tails, you give me 10 pounds. Now, if we were to flip that 100 times, and I was to say, do you want to, you can actually choose. You can actually now have tails, or you can have heads, which one do you want to choose? You'd probably be confident and say, well, doesn't really matter, does it? Because it's 50-50, it's fair, it's a fair coin. So 50-50, you're not that fast. Now let's say, for example, that this coin is weighted on the head side by 70%. This is weighted, 70% towards the head side. If we flip that 100 times, what are you gonna choose? Probably gonna choose heads, right? Because you know that if, when I flip this 100 times, more often than not, it might not be exactly 70, but more often than not, it's gonna be heads more than tails. So you know that, but the one thing that you can't tell me, which is what I want you to understand in the psychological section here, is you cannot tell me the sequence. So we can, we can, we can tally it off, right? We can go to heads, tails, heads, tails, so, for example, tails may come in, you know, five times in a row. One, two, three, four, five in the first five flips. Does that mean you're going to start second guessing that it's weighted on the head side 70%? Or would your mind say, nope, doesn't matter. Well, I know that after flipping this 100 times, you know, it's going to be more within my favor. What tends to happen is that if it's a fair coin, so 50-50, you feel fine because you know, right, well, if, I, if it works or if it doesn't, 50-50, that's fair. What actually happens is that, let's take, let's say for example that there's 70% weighted on the head sides, this is now your strategy in Forex, this is your formula, or in stocks, whatever it may be, that's your formula, the 70%. What tends to happen when something doesn't go within your favor? What do you feel? You feel emotional, you feel all of those feelings. Why do you feel that? Because we find it hard as human beings to accept that if something has an edge, if it's within our favor, if we have an edge, we have a hard time accepting when it doesn't work out in our favor. And why would you think that? We know it's not 100%, but the brain, doesn't, the brain doesn't feel that. What the brain says is that this should be playing out more often than not, which is true, 70% weighted on the head side. So what happens when tails comes in five times in a row? Your mind starts playing mind tricks on you. You start thinking, well, I've thought, have I got it wrong? Have I done it right? and you're th this is the strategy now, you start questioning things, then you start doing different things, you start getting in too early, you start asking different questions, you start making tweaks that don't need to be tweaked, and then you start taking trades that are just not within your 70% heads weighted plan. So you need to realize where this stems from, where this comes from. So the same way, you would be confident and say, yeah, I'm happy to pick heads, you know, flip it 100 times, I know more often than not it's gonna be within my favor. Well, that's the same time when you're taking those losses and you're getting the tails, you don't know the sequence the same way we don't know the sequence, but you would back yourself 100% if I was to say, you know, let's put more money on the table now. Let's say every single time that it's 100 pounds, you would happily choose heads because you know that it works. That is your strategy. Falcon strategy, for example. That's your Falcon strategy. You've got the formula, but what you don't know is the sequence and it's the, the inconsistency in the sequence that you don't know is what plays so many mind tricks on you. So. I encourage you, whether it's coin theory, whether it's something else, do practical things. And whether that's actually experiment with yourself and you know get a, a weighted coin, 70% on the head side, for example, and actually flip it for yourself. Because the more ways that you can personally experience that and realize probability, 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 it's gonna be more comfortable for you. So when you're in a live environment, you're in a live market and you're trading, you're not gonna then start to feel uncomfortable when 
you know, you have a few losses in a row and you start questioning yourself. You start doing something completely different. We see it time and time again. And one of the most important things as a trader, if you can develop this, you know, probabilistic mindset, it's one of the most important things. And that's a question I get asked a lot. They often say, you know, uh, what's the most important thing for me to do? How can I make more money? How can I do this? How can I get more pips? And they tend to focus on not the right thing that's going to help make them become consistent and successful where if you focus on thinking in probabilities and i know it's not easy at the beginning right but if you can focus on learning to think in probabilities and accept that you won't know the exact sequence but you'll know it works is the same way that you'll feel comfortable saying well if i'm on the right path i don't know when exactly you're going to be consistent even for a falcon member i can't say to you in six months yep it's going to happen for you because some people have made it happen in three months some people have made it happen in a year and a half Every single person's journey is different. I don't know when exactly the date that it's gonna happen for you, but I know if you do the right things consistently that it will happen for you. It's just only a matter of time. It's a little bit like coin theory and a bit like trading. You know, you have to give yourself, and this is another thing on probabilities, you have to give yourself an opportunity to succeed and let probabilities play out. What do I mean by that? Well, this is one thing I wanna leave you with. If you only flip the coin 30 times, for example, then have you really got an average? And do you really know whether it's played out or not? You might have had 20 overall, 20 tails, and then 10 heads. And then you thought, oh, it doesn't work. We well, haven't given it enough time to play out. And it's the same with trades. Some people, they, they, they're so conservative, they end up taking four trades a month. And then they wonder why, well, three of those could have been losses and one win. And you, know, you could have had three minus 1%, and you could have had one win at you know, just 3%. You're sitting at break even, for example, or just plus one if you made 4% on the one trade. You tend to realize that you need to trade enough. And I can't tell you the exact number, but I tend to find the sweet spot for me is just over 10 trades. Anywhere, you know, 10, 12, 15, sometimes a little bit more, depending on how active the market is, depending on what opportunities there are, good quality trades. That's the sweet spot for me. I found that my results, they went lower, especially uh, last month. I took how many, it was something like five or six trades. It was one of my lowest, right? And I ended on a really low return, you know? It doesn't mean that the more trades I take, the more money, but you have to trade a certain, you have to take a certain amount of trades, put it that way, to actually let probabilities play out rather than being so conservative that you don't take trades in the first place. So find what works for you. I'd be keen to know how many trades that you guys and girls take for those of you that trade different strategies. You know, on, on average at Falcon, you'd probably find people take anywhere between 10 to 20. You know, some people on the slightly lower end and then some people on the slightly higher end. The people that find the most consistency, they tend to be around that sort of threshold. And you're gonna find what works for you, right? It's not an exact number that you need to focus on or set yourself these kind of goals that, oh, if I take two trades a week, then I'll be successful. It doesn't work like that. You need to give yourself, you know, that little bit of flexibility and freedom to do that. And just understand one thing as well, you don't need an incredibly high strike rate to be consistent. It's about capping your losses. You need to make sure that your losses are sticking at only 1%, right? If you can do that and that you have a 50% strike rate, you can still be consistent, you can still be successful. So understand this thing because the reason why people get so emotional and why they tend not to succeed is because they forget about the fact that you don't need a crazily high strike rate to succeed. But what they don't factor in is that you need to risk low. What they do is they, they might have a 60% strike rate, but when they lose, they lose big. So they risk 20% of their account, 4% of their account, 5% of their account. They play with the numbers when you just can't. You have to stick to the single number. Whether that is 1% all the way through, 2% all the way through, or 3% all the way through, stick to one number. Don't decide that, oh, this trade looks good, I'm gonna risk 3%. Well, this trade looks good. Probability doesn't understand what that means. And that's where people go unstuck. Guess what? That trade loses they feel like they need to make it back they start making bad decisions and it spirals out of control so just understand what probability means and the law of averages and understand that it's about randomness the market's random and you can find consistency in randomness you just need to realize what probability actually is so hopefully it gives you something to think about anyway and you know psychology is such a broad broad spectrum i would love to hear your thoughts on it, of any psychological things that you know you found that has helped you helped you along the way in trading as well i'd love to know but again, I'm gonna get back to working on the content. Excited for you guys and girls of Falcon community. You're gonna absolutely love it. We've got so much content coming out in the works, especially diving deeper into that, understanding how to unwire your brain and rewire it on a subconscious level so you can work as effective as possible. Guys and girls, have an incredible week ahead and I will speak to you all soon.